You know, the use of mail-in ballots and curbside voting led to plenty of debate this election year, but casting ballots and counting them accurately, well, that's always been clouded in controversy, no matter what the method. Chris Sadegui shows us the many tools of democracy in today's Daybreak Rewind. A foundation of democracy. There had been a record turnout. The will of the people. Full election coverage statewide and nationwide. A civic duty as old as our country. Newspapers would publish ballots. Dr. Bob Stein at Rice University has studied the act of casting a ballot dating back all the way to the 1700s. And you would take this ballot completed to a local, usually what we would call polling location, but it looked awfully like a saloon. To what happened behind the curtain. A lever machine that you would operate by pushing a lever. Emerging in the early 1900s, the SMU Jones Film Library shows WFAA footage from the 1960 presidential election when a line down the hallway at Thomas Rusk Junior High waited to step into the booth and start pulling levers. And the lever operated a dial in the back of the machine that counted one, two, three, four. They were tampered with, they could be tampered with, I should say, and led to a lot of controversy over fraud. So the 1970 midterm election brought a big change, but the controversy remained. Those controversial punch card voting machines are getting a workout here in the days before the election. Casting a vote by punch card? Opinions were varied. Well, I think it's a great improvement over the large, bulky booth. I think if we use it during this first election, there's going to be a lot of dead votes cast. Anybody with uh, any intelligence at all could operate this. Well, that statement was put to the test decades later. Looks like a very clear vote. Yeah. Yeah. Like the month-long recounts of hanging chads in Florida in the year 2000 were the catalyst for the electronic systems most voters use today. But the election day madness also spurred the adoption of another voting innovation. Texans were already using. By 94, we instituted in-person early voting at satellite sites, and it, the, his, the, the rest is just history. So where do we go from here? If we can do our banking on our phones and do so with a high level of security, we should be able to vote. Stein thinks the next wave of the future is being able to vote in more places at more times, possibly on your phone or whatever way you're comfortable. Vote your way. Give voters a market of choices. More choices to make your choices, because as history has shown, there's a lot of ways to do it. In Dallas, I'm Chris Sadi. Something you may have noticed watching those pieces, or that piece rather, a lack of diversity from voters in those videos from the 60s. And we do want to acknowledge that poll taxes were in place until the 1964 election, with the Texas state constitution complying to end that practice in 1966. Of course, the Voting Act signed into law in 1965.